family and friends have never been more important than they are today. Everywhere you turn, there seem to be reasons to give up or not even try at all. We want to be the light in these times and an inspiration for others to keep pushing forward. My journey of growth comes through humility, and I welcome all who are looking to grow with me. Thanks for tuning in to the Crew First Culture Podcast. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Glad to have you here with me today, and glad to have my next guest on today with me as well. We got Nick Higgins today, and he is with Firehouse Tribune. How you doing, Nick? I'm good. How are you? Yeah. I'm doing good. Looking forward to another good conversation. We, we've not talked a lot, but definitely have shared back and forth posts and, and things like that. I really enjoy what you guys are putting out and, and going to let you give a little bio here real quick. But I, if, if you've not followed or seen a Firehouse Tribune on social media pages or the website, definitely go and check them out. They're definitely spreading some, some positive positive messages and, and doing some good things. So that being said, Nick, give us a little introduction and bio and, and as far as you want to take it. All right. Um, like Jeremy said, my name's Nick. Um, I've been in the fire service for going on 19 years. I'm in New Jersey. Uh, I'm also a um, New Jersey State Fire Instructor. Uh, I've worked in an academy for a few years. Uh, no longer I work in an academy. I do some stuff privately with a friend of mine through Alpha Omega Training. Uh, I teach throughout the state. I also am a advocate for the state of New Jersey and a not national volunteer, national um, NFFF, National Fallen Firefighters Foundation. Uh, too much coffee today, so I'm a little uh, a little over the place right now. <laughs> I'm also a uh, instructor for the National Volunteer Fire Council, and um, I'm the founder of the Firehouse Tribune. A uh, little bit about me, and uh, spoke at uh, Firehouse Expo. 2017, 2018, spoken in the Maryland Fire Conference just this past year on the virtual learning due to the pandemic. So hopefully I'll be back there next year to um, speak as well. But that was just a little quick summary about me and the fire service. That's great. So before we kind of get into where we're going, I, I just want to get a little more of a bio on kind of what brought you to where you're at because this is this is becoming more and more interesting to me because there seems to be a very distinct pattern and kind of the stories of, of everybody I have on and myself included in that and I just want to I just like kind of digging into what brought you to this point so you know you, you started you started firehouse unit is it was it or, uh, 2017 is that correct um. 2015. 2015. Okay. So you've been around. doing it quite a while. Yeah. So what what kind of led you to that, to starting you know the website and the social media and all that? Uh, I just it kind of started. I wanted to do some type of training that was more me, that was more myself. Was just doing things that was um, more life based, more real based than doing you know working at a school. You're doing stuff right out of the textbook. And you're teaching things that are hands-on that you've, that you've came across in your experiences, but you still have that script to go by. I kind of wanted to do stuff that you're not going to listen to um, in a classroom. You're not going to hear about all the time. And as it grew, you know, I was doing a lot of stuff on tactics. And I, I still do. I still put tactics out there. But I started adding more stuff about how it relates to your life and how life and the fire service and it all kind of can go together and things we take from the fire service, we can attribute to our life and things we learn from our life experiences. We can bring into the fire service, whether it be team building, leadership, discipline, it all goes hand in hand. And, and that's how it kind of evolved over the years and meeting different people, having them come on with me, writing different things inspired me more to, to use more of me than more of just constantly putting out, how to put out a fire or how to size of a building, you know, add more value to what, what we're writing about and using it from experiences that I've come across even more so than I, I have in the beginning. And that kind of helped me get more of an audience, get out there more, especially on a national side speaking. So it, it really evolved from what it started as. 
yeah, that that's kind of that's kind of where I'm going, and and it and it leads us right where we're in the direction we're headed. But it seems to be almost three kind of common denominators, or at least a few of of these, and and that's it's either filling a hole in in your life. It's filling a void in what you feel like the fire service is missing, or it's just frustration because you're wanting to do something good and you're not being able to do it where you're at. And so it seems like the more I kind of ask those questions to people I have on or people I'm just meeting on social media or whatever, there's just always some similarities in at least one or two of those three areas of, of what kind of got them started. And it's just always interesting to me that, that, you know, it's the same story. Right. So, yeah. kind of what you're saying. It, it's been just um, always being competitive is something that I've, I've been an athlete my whole life. So I, I still have that fire inside to keep, keep training and keep going. Yeah. So being able to bring that mentality in what I've done in collegiate sports and even beyond that really helped me kind of get this going more. And it, it fuels me too, you know, and, being able to, to help people and I don't care how many people like it. I don't look at the likes. I look at um, the value it adds. Cause when I see people sharing it or sending me messages, you know, that, that's what I like. That's what it means. Like, all right, I'm, I'm doing something that's, that's helping people. Maybe you're having a bad day and you know, I'm in the firehouse today, but you know, I'm helping them in another way doing it. And any way I can get my thoughts and, ideas out there the better yeah it's almost like a therapy exactly and that's and that's similar to, to my story you know as well and and like i said there's so many others and and kind of some conversations i've had in past episodes is it's really starting to make me realize that if that's the case that just means there's a lot more out there that haven't really found this you know, this, these platforms to get that out, or they haven't found the Firehouse Tribune to can I connect to and, and realize that they're not the only ones feeling that way. And so it just kind of makes me want to keep going and, and want to keep finding people like you and, and really sharing their stories and just trying to reach as many people as I can. Is that kind of, is, is that more of a, a driver for you, the, the more that people connect with you and, and share their appreciation for what you're doing. Yeah, it, it definitely keeps me going. Then, you know, in the beginning it was, it was hard to get off the ground. Um, and I had, I, you know, we have other contributors to the page and they help out as well. And that definitely sparked it more in the beginning. I was nervous in the beginning. I'm this guy from New Jersey, just putting out some, some, some blogs. Like, who is this guy? No one knows him. He's never spoken on a, on a national circuit before, you know, just teaching in New Jersey. You know, who is he? But as time went on, you know, people would message me, hey, like, you're stuck. Keep it up. Can I use some of your stuff in my training? Um, yeah, great. You know, you can use, if you want to use the other contributors, you know, I'll let them, I'll ask them, let them know, get their permission, you know, to use some stuff. Um, but it's definitely helped out. And, and the one thing, I don't post a, a lot of articles, you know, a lot of other pages on the negative side, people are saying, you know, you don't post enough as far as on your website. Yeah. Well, I use more social media because more people are more social media based than they go to the website, but talking with some people, you know, it, it kind of dawned on me that if I'm just pushing out articles every week, to me, am I adding any value to it? Yeah. And I want to make sure I'm adding value to what I'm putting out there. I'm not just writing a textbook article. And in the beginning, I was kind of sort of doing that. And now I'm trying to add it where you have your topic, whether it's a firematics topic, a discipline, working out, whatever it is. But I'm adding some type of experience along with it. So yeah. I'm not just telling you something, but I'm telling you it from my point of view, something that I've maybe come across um, firsthand, secondhand, and trying to keep that value to what it brings more to the table. And you, I could paint a picture around what I'm talking about rather than just, you know, how, how to size up a building or yeah. doing some fire suppression. So I like to add value to what I'm, what I'm putting out the articles. 
and everybody on the team, they do the same thing. That's why we, we keep them so spread out because we want to take our time. So and write stuff people are going to really digest. Not just rush the things out that's not quite yeah. where you want it to be. You know, I, I know kind of one of your focuses is, is keep things positive and, and staying on that side of things. And that's something I really appreciate and something that, that I focus on as well. Uh, I know that, that you have all, I, I try to do this, if, you know, people have been on other podcasts to, to kind of steer them towards that direction as well. If, if they like what they're hearing, you uh, were on the professional brotherhood podcast 15, I believe episode 15. Uh, you, talked about a lot of good things there and, and, and some similarities of, of what we're going to be talking about as well, but I want to kind of maybe play into that some or, or hit it from other angles, but you talked with Brian a lot about social media and, and a lot of kind of the downfalls of it, a lot of the things that you need to really avoid. And so we'll, you know, we'll probably kind of maybe steer on another angle for that, but definitely if, if you do like what you're hearing and, and want to hear more from Nick. He's He's been on the Profession Brotherhood episode 15, Five Alarm Task Force podcast as well. So I always like to do that. You know, we're we're all, as I've said before, we're on the same team. We're, we're trying to do the same things, push good message, positive attitude, and, and doing good things with fire service. So we've got no problem given, <laughs> giving, giving, uh, other platforms, some, some interest. So that being said, kind of, kind of where I want to go and, and I, I don't know the title yet, but, but somewhere in the realm of positive outlets for frustrated firefighters. And, and that's, that's kind of what I've mentioned earlier is, is I know there's a lot of people out there that, that are fresh in a, in a spot where they're frustrated. And, and these are good people that want to do good things. And, and for whatever reason, they're just being held back or, or the resources aren't there or whatever. And this ties directly into who I am and why I'm sitting in this chair right now. And so I know it may be a little bit different for you, Nick, but that's, that's kind of where I want to go. And, and so to just to talk a little bit more before I let you go, kind of my progression was frustration because of trying to do something. I started, it started coming out in writing and then I kind of went the social media route and then came the podcast. And so, you know, I, I've had a little progression with myself and, and so that being said, that's where I want to go. You know, let's talk about some good outlets and some good things that people can do that are experiencing those type of situations and and how to use that for good instead of letting it you know negatively affect their message yeah like um like jeremy was saying social media is a big one um i i use social media for positivity you know that's what i, I like we're saying spread the message in a positive way so I, I like to do is for me i use it as a way to to share experiences to share knowledge to share what's on my mind off of experiences and I've come across different things throughout the day. I might be sitting at home and something might dawn. I might be watching a TV show, read a book, play my son, whatever. And I'll note, I'll, something will trigger me to put out something just by what maybe he's doing. Yeah. And realize that I can turn this into something fire service related. Yeah. I, I can turn it, make anything a fire service related if you really think about it. Um, and that's how I started putting out a lot of these posts on, on Instagram. I like Instagram the best over Facebook, over Twitter. I really like the way it's set up, especially for positivity, especially in the fire service, because we all know there's a lot of naysayers out there. There's a lot of trolls out there. But I try to look at it as if, if you're going to have something negative to say about it, that's fine. You're entitled to your opinion. You can do that. But I can't let that bring me down. I can't harp on it. I have to take that as a positive. And it took a long time, especially with the Fire Tribune, to really understand that. That it might be negative in writing back to me or whatever they're doing, but in a way it's positive for me. Because now I gained your attention. Now I was like, Yeah, you know who I am now. 
And you're going to, if, if you're writing to me, you're going to tell your friend, you're going to tell whoever else in your firehouse or wherever, what this guy's saying, what this guy's posting. And that, again, it, it brings more attention and it could bring it into a positive way for anybody yeah. because now you, you taught them something or you shared something that you have, some type of message you have. And that's where I think, you know, people, they go on these social media breaks and they stop getting, they can't take the negativity. And <laughs> a lot of people, like especially like when I read your stuff, I'm instantly ready to go out and just start going nuts because I love it. <laughs> I, I, I get all motivated most of the, by the stuff you put out there because it's like a refresher yeah. for some people. And I feel a lot of these podcasts, it's helping people train without having to fund money to go out. Cause a lot of departments, maybe they can't fund it. Um, maybe personally guys can make the time to travel and they need a way to learn something. And it's a good way to learn something through a podcast, through social media, uh, through websites, because you can, you can do it at your leisure. You can do it at, at your time and you can learn a lot of different things. Because I tell you, I learned a lot of stuff. I, I try to go to conferences as much as I can, but to make the time to pick up for a few days, that's a lot to do. And I mean, now with this pandemic going on, I'll sit and, I, and being part of the National Fallen Firefighters Foundation, they're doing every, every last Thursday of the month is IC to IC discussions. You have a, a chief who was involved in the line of duty and it's a live Zoom. And they're talking about these line of duties that they were involved in. It, it's hard to hear when you're looking at the person through a computer talking about what happened that day with their line of duty. But it's also a positive because we talk about reading NIOSH reports, reading the Rattler reports, reading all these reports that, you know, you should read. And I'll be honest, I don't read them all. I might not even read the whole thing if I read it because sometimes they're long and yeah. sometimes it's hard to read the whole thing. But by having an outlet like that, you can hear it firsthand. You can hear things. You can see the person's face. You can see the emotions. And you can really have a, a connection with these people and understand what went on that day without having to read it on a piece of paper and hear it from their mouth. And I find it's, it's, it's a positive way to learn. Um, in the beginning of the pandemic, a lot of other places were doing a lot of webinars, a lot of Zooms, a lot of training. And I've been noticing that a lot of my friends are even telling me in their firehouses, they gained more knowledge now yeah. and they're more engaged because you have podcasts that are, there's a lot of positivity out there. There's your podcast. There's uh, Brian's podcast. The Five Alarm Task Force is another one. And a lot of them, National Fi uh, Fire Radio, a lot of uh, podcasts out there that are, are bringing good messages and they're all coming from different angles. Yeah. And you know, talking to people, they, they love it because I, I just heard you talk uh, the other day with Brian Brush about how you, you listen to a podcast on your way to work. Mm. I, 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 do, I, like to, I like to listen to them in the morning. I like to listen throughout my day because it gets you going. It gets you thinking. And I'll hear stuff on a podcast. I might jot it down and then share it with, share it with the guys. Hey, I, I heard, I learned this, or they talked about this. And then I, if they don't believe me, I can hear, let's replay it. Because now you have a way to, to have them hear it through the, through the mouth of these people and say, oh, I went to a conference and this guy was talking about this. And, All right. Yeah, that's great. How did you interpret it? And you get the words mixed up. You have it on a podcast. You can hear them say it. Um, <laughs> it's, it's great. And yeah. I feel that social media has gotten better with, um, with spreading messages, especially with, with the, what's coming out of it. I've been seeing a lot of people I've been connecting with lately and everything is, is positive. And yeah, I mean, there's a lot, there's negative and everything, and, but it's what you'd make of that negative. Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll see somebody's posts and there'd be like a hundred comments, but there'd be like 50 likes. Well, it's a hundred comments, 50 likes. What are people writing? And some people have their little critique, which is great. And some people have their negativity, but what's good about it is you can comment and you can put your little twist on it or you can share it 
and you can add your little caption of your twist as well. And it's not only helping you get your message out, but you're taking somebody else's message and you're spreading their message even further. Yeah. And I've noticed that with um, Nick Esposito of Truck Tactics. Mm -hmm. He posts a lot and he posts all types of great stuff on truck work and it just goes through the masses and more people are getting to learn where he's coming from Yeah. as far as being on a truck company and learning all this truck work. These are things we didn't see five, six years ago or even as much before this pandemic, but now more people are grasping into, well, this might be the way to do it. Yeah. And we have here in New Jersey, we have our division of fire safety. We have a, um, our CEO program or certification programs and we can take courses um, each semester. It goes through uh, Kane University is the, is the uh, state university that hosts these courses. And they're, they're um, we get instructors from all over the country uh, that come and they teach their courses at different fire academies throughout in every county. And some are even held at Kane University and they're all lectures for the most part. And now they're doing it where instead of going to the academies because it is pandemic, you could do it right on your right on your phone, right on your computer. And instead of having a limit of 30 people in a class, whatever the classroom holds, you can have a hundred some people on these classes. And you get all day, you can sit there, you can listen to it, you get all the notes, you get everything. And more people seem to be more engaged because now it's like beforehand, if I want to take a, a CEU course for my instructor and the class was, I'm in the middle, I'm in central Jersey, but not every course is offered throughout the state. So you might need, you might need a specific course and it's held near the end, all the way at the southern tip of Jersey, which is like two hour ride, class is 8.30 in the morning. I'd have to get up at like four or five to drive all the way down there. So a lot of guys are like, well, I'm not driving two and a half, three hours just to go take a class. Now they're like, well, you know what? I don't have to worry about that. I can sit up, I could take it from where I'm at, take it in the firehouse, take it at home, take it wherever. And they're learning. And, and I feel that social media has brought, has brought people together. It's brought, I mean, the fire service from the people I've been speaking with, they just seem like they have been to they're always pushing each other's stuff now they're they're sharing whether it's merchandise whether it's the, their posts their, their blogs whatever it just seems like more and more are, are sharing this stuff they're uplifting each other they're bringing that brotherhood sisterhood back even if it's just on social media what you know it's in the firehouses but they're bringing it back to a grander scale and you got guys from Canada even joining into the mix with the US guys and vice versa yeah. and all over the country so over the world where it's just gotten to a point where everybody seems to be realizing that we're all in this together and the, the you know the trolling you know some of the stuff's funny you got I mean, some of the stuff that you know it's kind of funny at sometimes but um it's just really good to see people use social media as an outlet for positivity yeah. and pass on what they learn. I just saw you post last night. Well, for me, it was an hour ahead. So I saw it this morning, the training you did with the, um, you're doing hose advancements, ladder drills and whatnot. Yeah. I mean, you're sharing what you did. And, and that is something that people didn't have a few years ago or even last year for the most part. But now like, I'll see your stuff and I'll go back and I'll say, you know, we have an engine, we're an engine. Let's do it. Yeah. What you guys are doing. Let, 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 you know, they're in Oklahoma, we're in New Jersey. We're fighting fire. You know, yeah. let's, let's try it out. And there were things that I brought back and other guys bring back that they saw and they want to try it. And the best time to do it is, Hey, this guy got this great podcast, this great social media. He might not be talking about, Fire Maddox 24 seven on it, but he's putting out some great stuff on leadership, on discipline, on exercise. And then he's coming back with boom, there's some fire suppression work in there. So that little mix of everything is something that grasps, I think grasps more people's attention because yeah. anyone can relate to all different areas. Yeah. 
And that's what I'm starting to really see is happening more and more people. I kind of fell into that category because I just wanted to do training. I just wanted to train people because I was an instructor for a little while in an academy and my boss happened to, he had left the academy, started his own training company on the side, Alpha Omega Training Solutions. I'm throwing out there as like an ad, but uh, he's trying to get off the ground a little more outside of Jersey PA. Um, and he kind of boosted me up as well because he helps me out with this and we throw stuff back and forth off each other. He's an urban, in more of an urban setting as a fireman, but um, you know, having him help me out and Steve Green on the Five Line Task Force, what he's doing with his podcast is he's bringing everybody on. It doesn't matter what you talk about, what your area is in the fire service. If you got a message, he wants to hear it. You know, he's t- he'll bring in doctors, he'll bring in psychologists to talk about the wellness, the the, the fit the fit for duty as they call it, the cancer initiatives. He wants to to get that message out there because. To a lot of people, it's taboo. It's boring. It's it's not fighting fire. But those topics are very, very uh, important to hear. And yeah. being on his podcast, and and I'm actually became very good friends with him. We talk off the off the air all the time. And he kind of geared me into talking about life because I was a former uh, collegiate athlete, and then I started doing some amateur. Um, kickboxing tournaments and whatnot so I started learning how can I bring in my experience as an athlete into the fire service how can I bring in my experience being raised by a a, an army veteran and and having other people in independence all places in military bringing in that discipline level um how can I bring that into the fire service hell even Jocko Willink listening to his stuff all the time on the Jocko podcast, you know, all that stuff relates to the fire service because you got to have some type of leadership. You got to have discipline. You have to have those life experiences outside of what we're doing. And that's kind of how it went. And that's why I think social media has been so big lately and why it's been a positive outlet for a lot of responders. And even the aspect of direct messaging, I feel has been been great. There's guys like the next rung, Blake and Charlie, and they put stuff out where guys are texting them or yeah. message them about how they help them indirectly. And I'm a supporter of them, the Firehouse Tribune, we support it. You know, we we get we do we donate to them every month because we believe in the mental health of firefighters. Um, being an advocate as well, you know, that's big, the mental health side of it because people don't understand, and I'm not an expert on mental health at all by any means, but people don't understand what firefighters on any aspect go through, whether it's EMS, uh, firefighters, dispatchers especially go through, career volunteer, part-time, it doesn't matter, you're gonna go through something, you're gonna experience something, you're gonna digest it a certain way. And to have people to be able to speak to because you met them on social media, can really change a person's life. I met Steve Green uh, and I didn't expect, you know, that we were going to be friends and we run by stuff about life and run stuff about fire service or just helping people. I didn't expect that to happen, but we talk a lot, but it's, it's brought people together that you never would have ever probably met if there wasn't a social media. And it's, it's very positive in that sense. That's why I think it's, um, you got to take the, the negatives for the positive and put it into a positive spin on them all. Yeah. Because that's the way that I think. Is, go ahead. It is definitely, I was just going to say, it's it's definitely what you make of it. And, you know, I've, I've kind of touched on media a few times here and there in episodes, but oh, just thinking as you're talking, thinking about kind of what I – how I perceive it. I, I'm pretty particular on what I have, what I follow, you know, what, what comes across on my stuff. And as you're talking, I'm just thinking, you know, I don't, I don't see any negative stuff anymore because I don't, I don't follow any of it. I don't follow anybody that, that is involved in any of it. I don't, 
I don't have any political crap going on on my feed because I don't want that in my life. I don't have any of these guys that are putting out memes and, and stuff making fun of fire departments for this or that or volunteers or anything. I just, I don't have it. I don't see it. And so me personally, I just have such a good, uh, I don't know, a connection with it right now. And that's because I don't allow anything negative into it. And, and if, and if you do that, there are, like you said, so many positives and, you know, I put it, put an episode out a while back and kind of the main thought of it is we literally have the opportunity to touch lives across the world, not, not our, not our department, not our state, not, not even America, the world, the entire world. Now, what are we choosing to do with that power? And that, man, that is just, that's a huge, huge statement to me still. And it, and it still is in the back of my mind. And I got it. If, if you never really stopped and thought about it, you know, stop and think about that for a second, because that's the most powerful thing we have at our fingertips. Yep. And, and we can do really good things with it, or we can do really bad things with it. And, and that's really something that I love to think about, because I mean, it's true. I mean, I totally agree. Going to your point of at our fingertips, when I put out the posts on social media, even when I put the articles out there, some aren't even, that aren't even mine even, I'll read it like a hundred times. <laughs> and I'll say to myself, before I hit send, is this what I want to say? Is this the message yeah. that I want to portray? And I have another guy in the crew. He's an EMT. He's also in the FAA and a, and a, and a dispatcher. We call him our social media um, coordinator. I'll text it to him. Read this. What do you think about it? He goes, absolutely. Or, you know, maybe tweak a couple words here and there because yeah. it's like you said, you know, it's at our fingertips so we can hit the world. And um, one, one wrong word or how it's written or how it's phrased, you can interpret it a thousand, thousand different ways. And I want people to interpret it the way they feel comfortable, but I want it to hit a way where it's, I didn't think about it that way. I, I didn't think about how the way I eat contributes how I perform or yeah. the way how I sleep contributes to how I perform. And, you know, they talk about, they do all the, you know, it's also about sleep studies and whatnot, but you have to be able to, when you get it out there for that message, you want to make sure you can hit it on all, on all aspects and it's at your fingertips. And, and one, I mean, I truly believe if you put one bad thing out there, you can pretty much ruin everything you've built. And going back to your saying about the, the, the pot, the negative stuff, I, I've done that. I, I've went through my page and I'm a big fan of Steve Weatherford. I'm not a Giants fan, not a, football, not a Giants football fan at all, but I'm a fan of Steve Weatherford. He has his podcast and I was, I was a fan of him because of his fitness stuff, but listen to his podcast. He was talking about exactly what you said. If you don't want them in your, in your, in your life, don't follow them. Because if you don't, and, it, and I started going through a lot of stuff that I was following, realized that I don't need certain things to be, I don't need to follow certain people or certain pages out there because it's, it's not what I believe. Yeah. It's, it's not what I want to portray. And if they, if someone sees me following them, they might think that I'm a believer in that. And that's one thing that I want to keep it where it's, it's all positive. It's, it's all, everybody encourage each other. Everybody grows as a fire service because you can impact somebody in the middle of Europe somewhere just by a post you put out or a blog you write or a podcast you, you release. And that one person could pass it to 10 and then so forth and so on. So yeah. you just want to keep it positive as best you can and keep it on that right track of stay focused. What the mission is, what the goal is. Something you said earlier that I'd like to kind of get back to for a little bit is, you know, you talked about your, 
experience as an athlete and, and trying to find ways of bringing that into the fire service or bringing it to using it to, to help others or whatever, whatever that story is. And, and I think that's something else that we really need to think about is most firefighters, we have backgrounds of something, you know, if, if it's, if you got hired on, it, it may be just, you were an athlete in school or, or, you know, things like that. Or if you had a few years of other op occupations or whatever, before you became a firefighter, then you have you know, whatever you did. And so at my particular department, just as a small window, we have electricians, we have framers, we have all these different kinds of people we have military people and, and athletes and and there are so many lessons that everybody else can learn from these people that that they wouldn't learn if you don't share that and so you know we have electricians that they teach electrical safety classes and we have framers that teach building construction and and so you know if you are a military person and, and you've gained some some leadership knowledge or, or, you know, whatever it is, everybody has something in their past or, you, you know, if you're a volunteer and, and you're continuing to do something on the side or whatever it's, everybody has something to give beyond the fire service that they can tweak it and, and play it into a way to help those around us. And I think that's a, that's a good topic to kind of bring up. Yeah. Like, um, it really is, you know, I played baseball. I played baseball and I ran track for a while. I ran track in high school, played baseball in college, baseball even before high school. Um, Semi-pro teams, I was picked up by a minor league team, didn't play. Um, but learning how to prepare was something that I learned through that, through, through sports and martial arts, because I, I kind of want to go back to something you, you spoke about on an earlier podcast about fitness it was with um brian brush about how you, you you made a comment that isn't a work you're stretching hose doing like that's a workout in itself and i totally agree and, and the reason I, I bring it up is because i tell people all the time when i'm talking about fitness and i was a personal trainer and i still do some training as well as you can train you can lift the weights you can go out and you can do all that type of exercise, which is great. All that fitness stuff, which is good for the body. It's good to condition the body, strengthen the body. Yeah. But every athlete still has to go through the fundamentals of the game. And the same goes with the fire service. Like every day when I walked on that baseball field, when I stepped foot on that field, we, we warmed up. We ran our laps, we stretched, and we started throwing every day. Yeah. We also had the, I was an outfielder. I had to catch fly balls every single day. I, I mean, I did, I could do it in my sleep. I can do part of my eyes closed and hit every day, run bases every day. Yeah. But if you don't practice the actual applications, what, you, you can be strong, you can be in shape, but there's a different feeling when you're actually using the tools of the trade to do the same, to do that job. And it's, Athletes do it all the time. You see it. You see it in, in fighting as well. You still have to work out. You still have to condition your body. You still have to eat right. But you still have to train accordingly with the tools of the trade. Fighters spar in practice for a reason. Because the first time you get into, a, into an octagon or a ring or a cage or whatever, and you haven't gotten hit, it's going to be a wake-up call in there. It's not going to be what you want. If I stepped into the box as a hitter, and I never took I never took live pitching, and the first times in a game, it's going to be ugly. But if I do the same thing with preparing myself outside of the firehouse, with everything else, conditioning my body, strengthening it, I still have to go in there and pull lines. I still have to practice that because I might be strong, I might be in shape, but now you're moving a hose. One length of H two four is like fifty two pounds, fifty two pounds or so. Um, you're you have to move variable weight, move weight that's not what you're used to moving because it's not something you do all the time. 
but you have to get that body conditioned to that. It still has to be conditioned and strength to still do the tasks. And that's where being an athlete and have that mindset and sharing it with people still can help a lot of people. You know, guys, I, I see guys and where I'm at, even guys, they don't, a lot of guys, they might not exercise at all. And when it comes time to doing these jobs, like putting the air pack on, crawling around, you see the windedness and you see them getting tired faster. You see them sucking the bottles down, but it's like a, and then you see other guys who, who, who run, who condition their body. And when they put the pack on, they, they stretch the lines or they climb the, whatever they're doing, they might be sucking the pack down as well because they still haven't put that application together where they're still doing the tools of the trade. They're still putting those, yeah. they're not stretching lines. They're not, you know, they're just working out. And it's great to have guys out there, firefighter functional fitness, pushing that out because they're doing things as well that are showing people you can still do these things in the firehouse and you can make it ap applicable to your job. But there's still something to be said for actually moving the hose, raising the ladders, and building a callus in your muscles and in your mind to get that to still work right. Because you can't pick up a bat in a game and hit a ball if you never hit it in practice. It doesn't work. You can't throw a punch in a fight or take a punch in a fight if you never got hit in practice. It's just not gonna work. You still have to do those things. And that's why me as an athlete, I'm so adamant about doing it all. You know, I have my days where I train and I train accordingly to what I, I wanna train on. You know, I, I, I do the functional fitness in a way, but I, I do a lot of other stuff because I wanna test my body. I wanna see what I can do in all different yeah. aspects because it's like a science experiment and that's what I try to do with my training. But then when I'm doing firehouse stuff, it's specifically on doing what we need to do. And it has to be real. The, the training has to be, be real. You know, we all stretch lines and that's what we need to do. We need to practice getting comfortable with handling a hose, just in the sense of handling the pressures, handling, moving it around in a controlled atmosphere before you can bring it into a live fire scenario. And these are things I don't really hear people say too much, but I always believe the crawl before you walk, walk before you run type mentality, kind of put it together, build blocks before you, you jump into the fire in a sense. And I've got that mentality from being an athlete and learning that you could take that aspect. And the other aspect is preparing yourself also mentally and looking at it from also a, an area of strategies and tactics and, and size ups, because as an athlete, you have a scouting report of your pitcher. I'm an athlete, I have a, a playing baseball. You know who the pitcher is. You have a report of what he throws, his sequences, pitches and whatnot. And you can kind of relate that to the fire service because in a sense, that's like a pre-plan. You have a pre-plan. You, you, if you pre-plan it right, you, you should know the ins and outs of buildings to the best of your knowledge. And if it's a frequent flyer, as we call it, we're always there for fire alarms, you should even know more about what's going on because you're in there and know the, the layouts, what's in the rooms, you know, the size of them, where the egresses are, windows, doors, whatnot. Um, and that kind of, again, to me, translate back to preparing for a game. Yeah. And, and that's how I kind of focus everything on is um, Dr. Dave Griffin says we're tactical athletes or functional athletes, as they also say. We are. We're athletes in a sense because we're preparing ourselves, preparing our minds, preparing our bodies, preparing our crews, our teams to work in unison. Because without that, you, you're, you're leading the line, of, you're going down the line of probably failure and not getting that outcome that you really want, which in the ultimate end is to put the fire out, if that's what you're set to do at that particular moment. Oh, yeah. Yeah, kind of, kind of the same deal. You, you tying, tying that question into really the rest of the conversation is not only are we talking about, like I've mentioned people from my department and, and their experiences, but if, if you add in 
the whole social media thing, you know, I follow people that are huge into fitness. I follow people that are huge into truck work. I follow people that are huge into engine work and, you know, people like you that are huge into more of a, an article or, or the writing or things like that. And, and so that's the same thing. You know, if, if I personally am somebody that loves engine work and, and loves flowing water and, and all that, you know, maybe that's my little niche that I could share or, if, you know, force of wintry or if I'm a truck guy that, that loves to share that stuff. It's, it's just sharing what you have with, with others and, and making the department, making the crew, making the fire service better in whatever way that you personally can. You know, I am not, I'm not a truck guy. We don't, we don't operate trucks like that. We don't have truck companies. I've always been on the truck my entire career. So I am not going to be somebody, or you're not going to ever see truck work on my page. You know, we, we may be doing scenarios involving, you know, ladders and things like that or, or stuff like that, which you know, I'll put out whatever we're doing, but I'm not going to personally stand up and say, you know, any kind of, of experience or anything like that with that, because I'm just, that's just not me. I don't, I don't have that experience. So you know, stay in your lane kind of type of conversation, but, but use what you have, you know, use what you're excited about, use what you're passionate about and, and really share what you have to offer. I, I, I totally agree. You know, like you said, everybody has a niche, everybody has a something that they're passionate about that they specialize in. And I've been around guys that have been nothing but construction. And they can tell you ins and outs of how to put the pool together, taking it down, and what's in it. And you have other guys that you tell them about looking at a building, and they're just looking at some some wood, and that's all they see. They don't even – it doesn't – some guys can't comprehend it. And, hey, that's fine. Yeah. Not yeah. everybody's going to be good at everything. And for us, it's the same boat. Like, you're not going to see me do a lot of truck stuff because I don't, I don't have it. Um, but raising ladders, yeah, for us, we want to have the basic know-how of engine of, of truck work a little you know to what we need but what we say is we have on our engine we have everything we need and we can do as good a job as anybody else can do with what we have and we train on it and we make sure we're very proficient in it but we utilize everybody's strengths to our to our advantage but we also take their weaknesses and we try to strengthen those as well we just guys that we know that they might not be good with truck work. So they're not going to want to talk about it, but they're going to want to learn more. And that's how I kind of, that's why I kind of like having the way it's been going with my page. I'm not going to post stuff out there that I'm not too, uh, too versed on, you know, if I'm not too, if I'm not that experienced in it, I'm not going to talk about it. I might post a picture, like you said, covered it, but nothing where I'm going to, act like an expert in something that I'm not. And uh, yeah. those are the people that I also kind of, I've realized over time and that's where negative social media comes in and you want to yeah. weed that out and, and go to the guys that, that can give you that one up because yeah. you're not next, no one can be an expert in everything and utilizing the people for what they're worth, I think means more to them than anything else utilizing their worth and that, that's why take the, go, go ahead uh, that, that's why i just i just love how you can take a lot of areas of life and past experiences and bring it into the fire service because yep. you can utilize their strengths to their advantage and everybody's advantage yeah yeah i think I think that this kind of brings up a an, another little side topic and a, another balance in the act for those in leadership positions is, you know, everybody obviously has their strengths. Everybody obviously has their weaknesses. And, and I've heard certain people in you know, the, the leadership experts or whatever, I've heard some say that, you know, don't focus on your, your weaknesses, focus on your strengths. And, and I get that. But I think us in the fire service, we can't depend on that. You know, 
we we are going to be stronger in certain areas than other people on our crew but we can't focus on those areas because we may be called to do those weaker areas on a very serious scene and you you can't just say well that's not something i'm good at so i don't really work at it i work on this other thing that i'm really good at well as as an officer or leader you know over people there is a a balance to where you obviously do want to use people in their stronger areas and and take advantage of those strengths but you also want to really focus on you know where somebody may be a little lacking a little less skilled and and really put some effort in that as well and that's kind of that's part of being a leader and really paying attention to what's going on out there yeah you know that's even personally for me there's areas even to this day that you know you're not you're not really good at it. there's areas that you're not that you don't specialize in and there were times where when i first started out i didn't understand co alarms i for some reason it didn't it didn't, it didn't click to me for many years and i started asking the guys that when i see them in there how do you know so much about this you know like how do you know all this stuff like all these different things and they would take me aside and they would explain to me why they did what they did and what they did and you know picking people's brains to understand why they did things successfully or even not successfully really help out you know so i i learned a lot of different things and i can utilize them to this day i can share them with the younger guys out there because if you're only going to focus on your strengths, you're never going to get to the next level. And like yeah. you said, being a leader sure. and an yeah. even if you're, if you're a company officer, it's, and I'm not, but you know, guys look up to them to know they should know all kinds of stuff. They should be the ones to answer the questions. And I think if you have a good understanding of things, you should, that that's a big plus. And you gotta, like they say in, in sports, a five, two athlete, you're, you're good at everything. Yeah. You have a, a good, well uh, balanced self about your knowledge mm -hmm. and your skills. Because if you're not balanced in what you're what you're doing, yeah. what are you? You're only you're holding not only holding yourself back, but you're holding your team back, your crew back. Because they can only count on you to do one thing. They can't count on you to do multitude of things. Like you said, if something does happen, and personal experience for me. One of my first fires ever, probably like my third or fourth fire, we were at a multi-alarm. It was our, it was our, I'll tell you just real quick, multi-dwelling re uh, residency. And, um, you know, it was spreading throughout this whole place. And I went to rehab, I came back and the incident commander wanted me to climb an area and go into the third floor. Hey, I haven't done that since fires, since the academy. I said, what? So listen, he goes, listen, this ain't the time to, to start <laughs> asking questions, man. And uh, I looked at him and said, I don't know if I'm comfortable with this. And he looked at me and said, well, I got two guys right behind you that are comfortable doing it. So if you're not comfortable doing this, well, let's slide for right now. But he took me aside after that and he said, listen, I need you to get comfortable climbing some ladders. You can climb ground ladders, that's fine, but I need you to get comfortable climbing. So we're going to have, we're going to have that, we're going to get you comfortable. Because you never know what's, when you're going to be called upon to do something that you've never done before. Yep. And you need, you need to be ready for it. Or you might be in a situation where that's your only way out. So I got comfortable. Because the only way to, to get better was to get uncomfortable with what I was doing. Get comfortable being uncomfortable. So I had to get over it. And it yep. took some time, but... It wasn't something I did all the time. Was like, we don't do it all the time. We need to practice on it. Exactly where I need to practice on it. Exactly where I need to comfortable with it. Because those are the situations that are going to get somebody hurt or get you jammed up. And to have those people out there that have that, that strength are the ones that you want to go to. You know, like I'm not going to ask a guy who's versed in building construction, isn't good at fire suppression. I'm not going to ask him too much about helping me with fire suppression and vice versa. So that's how I look at it as trying to make sure you're well-rounded. You have an, yeah. a good understanding and foundation. In it. You don't got to be an expert in it, but utilize the people that 
that do. Yep. And hone in on those weaknesses because you're not going to get to where you want to be if you're just focusing on one thing and one thing only. And as an athlete, as an outfielder, I had to focus on a bunch of things, hitting, fielding, base running, because I had to play the infield. I had to play the outfield, but I also had to hit. If I was just a hitter, I don't have to worry about that. But you have to be able, because you're never going to be called upon, to do something different. And one day you might be hitting a hydrant. The next day you might be on the nozzle. The next day you might be the backup man, whatever. But you might be doing different jobs, and if you're not comfortable with doing it, you got to get comfortable doing it quick. You might be a fill-in driver for the day, and you might not know that engine. Well, you're get comfortable knowing that engine, knowing how that panel set up and what's where. Um, because that's still that's the only way you can really get get really good at what you're doing and just have a good foundation. I think there's a lot of there's a lot of honesty there, or that is required there as well. You know, if if I'm somebody that is just not comfortable with ladders at all, and we may not do any training on it, well, that's not ever going to manifest until I say, hey, you know, I'm not comfortable with ladders. I know we don't train on it at all, but we probably should because I need to get better. I think. You know, just dropping the ego and dropping the pride and and being honest about where you need help with is is really kind of the foundation on whether somebody is is going to get better or somebody is just going to stay where they're at. And, you know, something else that goes with that to kind of tie it all back in together with where we're going is, you know, if you have those areas, say the the ladders like I talked about, you know, there's so many places you can go, you know, YouTube videos. And, and I know you got to kind of weed through some of it. I get it. But, you know, fire engineering, uh, brass tack or hard hat, what is it? Hard hat, hard facts and brass tacks. <laughs> I got it. Of, but Elkhart Brass puts out tons of videos of, of hose work and nozzles. And, yeah, and there's, there's so many good training videos out there to, you know, kind of get yourself started, get, get an idea of what, what the techniques are and then get out and do it and try it yourself or bring the crew out and do it or, you know, whatever that looks like. And so, you know, again, good tools at our fingertips if we just reach out and, and grab it. Absolutely. So much. And what somebody can do in New Jersey can certainly do in Oklahoma, can do in Maine. And that's one thing that I've, I've heard about as well. You know, we're from another area. We don't do, we don't fight fire. We don't do it that way. Someone was saying that to me one time and I was in some other state. And I said, well, the basics all the same. The concepts the same. You know, you might have a different outlook on it, but we all fight fire, right? We all have to go in and put the fire out. So there's always a new way to learn things, but do things. There's a hundred ways to do multitude of things. And, it's great to share them and have these people out there sharing their ideas, sharing their methods, because that might be in your toolbox, as they say, the next day. And you might be training on it with your crew and it might be a go-to from, from here on out that you never would have thought about. I, I think really the, the moral of the story today of, of what, what we're talking about, where we're going is just, you know, to find, find your way of, of helping. You know, if, if you're better in this area and than others, then, then use that area as, as a way to help others. If it's just the one younger firefighter that you're with on your crew, or if it's something that you create for your department, a class or a training exercise or, if it's a social media platform that you can start and, and get that, that kind of that niche out there and you know, what, whatever you got, whatever you're working with, whatever you can do to help the fire service, to help your crew, your department and yourself, you know, get started. It, it, there's no reason to not start. And, and if there's some type of fear or whatever that kind of holding you back, it, it's only going to help you personally 
through the process. And I, I will say that right just bla as blatant as I can is this whole thing has helped me so much of, of getting things off of my chest and, and finding good outlets to get some of these things out without them building frustration and, and resentment in me. And so that's, that's kind of my lesson I want to really give out and, and, and make vocal to everybody listening out there is, is find what you're good at and, and get started. Absolutely. Do it to your best of your abilities. And, and the one thing, the last thing I have is our mantra at the Firehouse Tribune is work hard, stay safe, live inspired. And I just started saying it, putting it on the websites, and somebody said, that's a good mantra. And they said, explain it. And I was like, uh, okay, um, work hard, whatever you do, whatever you do, always work hard at it to make it the best it can be for you and for who you're sharing it with, for your audience. Stay safe for what you do as well. Always make sure you're safe. You take care of yourself. Not just being safe in a fire, being safe every everything you do. Take care of yourself. And live inspired. Don't don't keep yourself in a bubble. Don't keep yourself in that box. Get outside that box and inspire yourself, inspire others, and utilize these platforms and all these people out there that are sharing their message. Embrace it and learn from it and keep going. That's a, that's a very simple, <clears throat> self-explanatory mantra, as you call it there, but really what else do you need? I mean, it's, it's, it's solid. You can't, you can't argue with any of that, so that's good, good stuff. Thank you. So talked a little bit about you know, your Firehouse Tribune. I want to definitely give you a, a chance to, to put any kind of information that you want out there. I know you said you're associated with the Fallen Firefighters Association. Yep. You have, let me make sure I got this right, Omega Training Solutions. Is that, is that correct? Who you work oh, with? Yeah. So yeah, go, go ahead and, and kind of give as much plugs or whatever you want to do with those things you're associated with. Cool. Well, I'm, I'm an advocate for the National Fallen Firefighters Foundation in New Jersey. But um, if you, anybody out there ever needs anything, line of duty, um, talks and just wants to learn more about the fire service and what we do. We have an online platform called the Fire, fire Hero Learning Network. It's free to sign up. There are hour long classes you can take, um, after action reviews, how to stay safe. And you can take these courses incident plan, incident action planning, the whole nine. You can take them for free. You get certificates at the end of them. You can go on there. And they're an hour long course. Also, if, if you go on to the fire, uh, National Fallen Firefighters website, there's a list of advocates for every state. You can reach out to the advocates. If they can come to your firehouse, and they can provide those topics live. And they're longer courses, but you can learn a lot about taking care of your own is one of them. The courage to be safe, leadership, accountability, culture, and knowledge, which is called understanding, is lack. You take these courses in person through um, an advocate. And it, it's great because the, the foundation really gives back to the families, but also gives back to the fire service, keeping us safe, training. And I love it. I, I, I was asked to be on it. And it's something that I, I have not, never, no, will never regret, never. I'm proud to do it. And I'm humbled to do it because it's a way to help keep the fire service safe. And Alpha Omega Training, it's New Jersey-based um, fireman, career fireman in an urban area in my area. He runs it, a lot of EMS on there. He's starting to open up a virtual academy. You can take his stuff online, sit there, do virtual EMS CEU training. He's going to start getting into um, behavioral health because he is a behavioral health expert. He has a, he is a um, adjunct professor as well in psychology, has his master's in that. So he wants to branch out. He speaks on the national and international level. I've spoken at Firehouse numerous times, a bunch of other um, national conferences, state conferences, and great information he puts out there. And um, the Firehouse Tribune, you know, we have our blog, www.thefirehousetribune.com. 
a bunch of articles on there. It's sorted out by contributor. Contributors are all over the state, all over the country. We've got guys from upstate New York, Virginia, West Virginia, Georgia, um, New Jersey. So we're a, mostly East Coast, South, but you know we're trying to expand out. Um, like I said, we spoke spoken a bunch of different. Um, myself personally spoke at a bunch of different um, conventions, conferences, but um. You know, I've spoken on other topics, which is critical thinking, that that's really my main one that I've spoken on at conferences and how to add value to your decision making and, and processes of a team building. So um, that's something I'm trying to do more um, web based and also trying to get out the firehouses as well and and and, and bring that to their area as well. So that that's what uh, we've been doing. People need how to reach me. I'm on Instagram at FH Tribune. Twitter at FH Tribune, and my email is um, editor at the firehouse and we're also on Facebook, the firehouse Tribune. And that's pretty much it, in a nutshell. All right, awesome. And I, I enjoy so much, you know, hearing, hearing the stories of, of great people that are that are trying to do great things, and and love sharing their stories with others, and and just kind of building a basically a network of, of people that are just trying their best to do good things. And I just love it. You know, the, the more and more people I meet and, and who reach out to me, it's just, like I said earlier, it just keeps me going. And I, I really appreciate your time, appreciate your story and, and everything yeah. you had to share. Thanks for having so me. So everybody out there, definitely check Nick out and his contributors on, on his website and his pages. Like I said earlier, they're putting great things out. They're doing great things. Just one of the one of the positive influences out there. That one of the many, and really give them a give them a try, a like, a follow, whatever whatever it is that on that platform that you're doing. So again, I thank you, Nick. I look forward to more communication and and what's to come in the, the future. Sounds good, man. I look forward to it as well. All right, we'll see you later. Thanks. Once again, I want to thank everybody out there so much for spending some time with us today. I hope you enjoyed the conversation and, and got some good things out of it. Look forward to getting you back on next time. I want to take a, a minute to thank my sponsor. It's Woods Forcible Entry Door Kits, owned by a great group of guys doing great things for the fire service, and they put out a really good product. If you haven't heard of them or if you're looking for some forcible entry props definitely look them up on facebook and instagram at woods forcible entry door kit they are putting out some additions to their product that really kind of broaden out the spectrum of different techniques and skills that you can do with their props so give them a shout give them a look definitely got some good stuff so thank you again i hope that the days coming up treat you well and until next time, stay safe, take care of each other.